Richard, what's the big news on Bitcoin? All of our dreams have finally come true. The largest derivatives market, the largest market on the entire planet, is listing Bitcoin futures, and they start testing in two days. Well, maybe one day now, and they launch the second week of December. And this isn't like the Ledger X launch where you have to sign up new customers and you know onboard them. This is the same interface that people trade billions and billions and billions of dollars of commodities. Uh, they're going to have an option to, to trade Bitcoin. So. All that liquidity that a currency needs to outcompete other currencies is finally going to show up, and it's going to make the price go to the moon. What an amazing intro! Explain to me what that would do to the Bitcoin price, or why that would make the Bitcoin price run. So, just recently, a a, a person that runs a brokerage took out a full-page article in the New York Times, warning that Bitcoin futures shouldn't be listed because it would endanger the entire economy of the United States. And his logic was that just as Bitcoin has gone from 700 to 7,000, so too could it easily go from 7,000 to 70,000, in which case the market would always be locked up and the shorts that were silly enough to short the biggest bull market that mankind has ever seen would never be able to cover and they would all go bankrupt. So I don't know about you, but... If the owner of one of the largest brokerages in the world is afraid that Bitcoin might go from 7,000 to 70,000 before people can close their shorts, that's really good news for a speculator. Now, the mechanics of how the futures price will affect the spot price is called cash and carry arbitrage or just cash and carry trading. It's where you see the futures is trading at $10,000 a coin, but the local spot price is trading at only 8,500. Therefore, there's a $1,500 difference that you can instantly lock in by buying the future and selling the spot, or rather selling the future and buying the spot. This drives down the price of the future, and this drives up the price of the spot. So what these futures are actually doing, if I understand this correctly, is number one, they're giving a platform for institutional investors to enter the market, where previously institutional investors haven't had an opportunity. But the other thing they're doing is that they're giving a platform to people who want to speculate on the price of Bitcoin in the future. So if the price today is, say, $8,500, you can speculate by pinning a price in the future of, say, $10,000. And if Bitcoin gets to $10,000, then you get $10,000, but you don't enjoy any more of the upside. Is that right? You will be locking in your profit of $1,500 short term. However... You will be losing out on any profit if the price goes over 10000 which it should. So if you thought Bitcoin went up really fast and really hard when no one has it in their wallet and you can't buy that much with it, what happens when Square Cash lets everyone buy it with their credit cards nearly instantly? What happens when more retail and user adoption occurs? What happens when Tier 2 rolls out and we have nearly instant and free transactions that are backed by and secured by real digital gold on the most secure network with the most hash power and the best developers, that only drives the price up. So we're at the beginning of an S-curve, and you have the once-in-a-lifetime very rare chance to get in before Wall Street does. So the early adopters, us, speculators, miners, uh, investors, we got in before Wall Street did. And now Wall Street's going to get in with their futures before Main Street. So the futures will allow an ETF, and the ETF won't let Joe, normal guy, invest his IRA in it. So we got in before Wall Street, Wall Street gets in before Main Street, we take over the world. What you're saying is that now institutions who previously haven't been able to buy Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies have almost like an entry point that they can actually buy into the cryptocurrency market while keeping their investment mandate, right? Many institutions have been barred from purchasing Bitcoin due to partnership agreements where the limited partners are not allowed to invest in certain categories of assets. So a hedge fund, a hedge fund manager could take his personal money and buy Bitcoin, but he wouldn't be allowed to just purchase some you know, random – You know, he couldn't invest in his brother's restaurant. It's against the terms of the investment uh, vehicle. And if, uh, if there wasn't a, a way – for an institution to have guaranteed and insured the thing they're buying, they wouldn't be allowed to buy it. So just recently, Coinbase and very shortly, Gemini rolled out institutional level uh, storage agreements where it's bonded, insured, 
and you pay a fee for them to make sure that it's safe. That plus CME futures will allow many institutional players that were barred by uh, their partnership agreements from investing to invest, and it will allow for ETFs because the ETF can buy the future, and then you can buy it just like any other stock in your normal stock trading interface. It's all about the user onboarding. So just because people can buy something, unless it's easy, they won't. And this solves the ease of entry problem for billions and billions and billions of dollars. So it also creates an unprecedented demand for Bitcoin, a demand for Bitcoin that we've never, ever seen before. If every millionaire in the world wanted a single Bitcoin, they couldn't have one because there will only be 21 million ever. Only about 16 million have been mined. Of those 60 million, uh, 16 million, Satoshi's got a million. I think he's deceased. I don't think his coins will ever be moved. They never have been. That leaves you with 15. Of those 15, probably another million was lost back when these things weren't worth anything. Now you're down to about 14. I mean, there's this measurement called days destroyed which shows how long it's been since a Bitcoin has been moved. And if you look at the days destroyed, the actual number of Bitcoins that are available and traded and moved around in the free market, it's about 5 million coins. So there's a whole lot of money fighting over 5 million coins. The price is going to go, in my estimate, as long as Wall Street gets in, to $20,000 by Christmas.